Let's start by going up to File and then Project and then over to New. So we'll just call this project Airplane. And let's go to our project folder here. We'll just um, we'll create uh, the location. It can be on the desktop here. I'll hit Choose. And then I'll use the defaults here for our project folder and then I'll hit Accept. So now I'm just going to minimize Maya and bring up my Finder window. And I'll go to my Pictures folder. Now here I have saved my front side and top view for the plane. Then I'm going to open up my Airplane Project folder. And then I'll select the front side and top view. I'll right click and copy those three items. And then inside the Project folder I'll double click on Source Images. And then I'll right click and paste those three reference images into that folder. So now our project folder is all set up and we're ready to begin the modeling process. All right, so let's uh, create a polygon plane right here. And let's change the dimensions of this to 10 by 10. And let's subdivisions width and height to 1. All right. So I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate that. And then I'll rotate it up. So the rotate x value should be 90. And I'll move this back. Translate z value is going to be negative 5. And let's change this. Translate y value to negative 5. I'll select this plane right here. Hit Command D. Rotate it negative 90 degrees on the y axis. And then I'm going to move it over to here. Our translate Z value should be 0. Translate X should be negative 5. And then we're ready. So now I'll press 6 in all four panels just to go to shaded mode. And then I'm going to go up to Window, Rendering Editors, and then over and down to Hypershade. And here I'm going to create three new Lamberts. I'll start with Lambert 2. I'll double click on it. It'll open it up over here in the Attribute Editor and I'll call this Top Ref Mat for Material. Over here in the Color Attribute I'll click on this button on the side. Click on File. And then over here under Image Name I'll click on this little folder. And I'll select Top View and then hit open. I'm going to double click on Lambert 3. Over here I'm going to, this is, let's see, let's call this side ref mat. Over here I'll click on the uh, checkered box and then go to file. Under image name I'll just click on this folder and go to side. I'll double click on Lambert 4 and then change this to front front ref mat and I'll go to my color attribute here click on file over here I'll select my file front view and then click open All right, so I'll take the front view and drag it onto here. Uh, side will go here, and the top view right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the hypershade, and then I'll bring up my channel box on the right-hand side. And then in each of the panels, I'm going to turn off the grid. And I'll just tumble and kind of readjust my uh, view here, and then turn off that final grid. If you look at the side reference image here, it's uh, facing the wrong direction, so let's fix that. I'm going to rotate this. This would be negative 270. Okay. And actually, before I, um, well, let's put this stuff on a layer. So I'll select all this and add it to a new layer right here on this, with this button. Double click on the layer one 
so that I can now rename this to ref layer. Hit save. All right. So I'm going to take my cylinder and just click on it once right here in the polygon shelf. And I'm going to rotate this cylinder. Our rotate x value should be 90. And I'm just going to scale this down. And let's see here. I'll move it up a little bit and scale it down some more. Now I actually want to leave my translate x value at zero. So what I'm going to do is instead of moving the object, I'm going to move the reference. So I'm going to select both the front view and the side view, hit W, and then move them over. Okay. So now I'll just turn on my reference right here by clicking twice on this empty box. And now I can no longer select these reference planes. Let's go up to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, and let's create one more material. I'm going to add a new Lambert. Double click on Lambert 5, and let's call this C. Let's go Transparent Matte. Over here, I'll bump up the transparency, and I'll change the color to blue. I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and drag it over to the object right here. And then um, I'm going to turn on my wireframe on shaded on these three panels here. OK, I'm just going to maybe move this up a tiny bit. Over here, I'm going to bring up my channel box again. All right. I'll just rename this to Airplane. And over here in the side panel, I'm just going to scale this out. I'll move it over slightly and then scale it out some more. All right, next I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then go to Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'm going to add a few edge loops on both sides of the plane here. So I'm going to dolly and pan in onto the nose of the airplane here. And I'll start to select these rings of vertices and scale them down. I'm going to scale down from the center. That's the yellow box in the center of the scale tool. I want to make sure I maintain the circular pattern of these rings. So now I'm going to select a few of these rings of vertices and move them down to kind of generate an area for the windshield. And then I'll go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. I'm going to add another edge loop here and scale this up slightly. At Q, I'm going to double click on this edge loop and scale it up slightly. Let's go Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. I guess that's a little too much. Let's uh, scale this down a little bit and then let's move it down. So we could go in here and maybe scale it down a little bit more. And then if we wanted to, we could come in here, maybe move this over. So you can kind of decide what you think looks best. As you can see, I have not followed my reference image. Um, I much prefer this was not very accurate uh, in the shape, I think, and I prefer this new shape. So whenever you create reference images, if you don't like what you've drawn, you can always change when you actually model the, uh, the object. So let's go back here and let's scale these down. And 
now I'm just going to move these up and let's add another edge loop in right here maybe just to round this out a little bit Okay, so we've pretty much completed the fuselage. So let's go back over here to the side panel and add two more edge loops. One right here and one over here for the wings. I'll press Q and I'll go over here to my perspective panel. I'm going to right click, go to face. I'm going to select a whole bunch of faces on the bottom side here. Remember you can hit F to frame your selection and then your camera will tumble around. Okay, so I'm going to press extrude and move these faces out. Okay, and I'm just going to click on any of these three cubes here and scale everything in a little bit. And then over here in the front panel, I'll right click, go to vertex, select the vertices on both these sides, and move them up a little bit. I'll go to the top panel, and I'm going to move this set of vertices back, and this set of vertices forward a little bit. Now I'm just going to extrude one wing, and then um, we will mirror the other side of the plane. I'm just going to select two faces on the side here and I'm going to hit extrude, go out, then I'll press R and I'll scale these together and then I'll scale them together this way, move these faces up like so. Alright, I'm going to right click, go to vertex, select these vertices here and move them back a little bit. Before I go in any further, I'm going to select the four vertices on the corners here, hit R, and scale them in a little bit. All right, I'm going to go to face, select these faces here, just the two, and let's extrude out two times. So I'm going to extrude out to where the wing changes angle on the back here, so right to here. I'll extrude again, go all the way to the edge of the pattern. And then I'm going to right click, go to vertex, and I'll move the vertices so that they match up with my wing here. Okay, so now I'm going to select this set of vertices right here and scale them down. And then this set over here is going to be scaled down even further. I'm going to select all of these, press E for my rotate tool, press home to move my pivot point to here, and then press home again. I'm going to rotate this whole wing up. Okay, so we have a great start to our airplane, and in the second part of this video series, we will complete the model.